Testy one, too. Everybody get some coffee. Calm down. Calm down. Yeah, let's get some coffee and do that because we're in a very critical moment in history. We're in a very critical moment in history. Don't. Is it working? The Holy Land is in peril. Let me put a shout out real fast. Uh, We need to call to action right now. I need you to slash those energy bills right now at at uh, don't waste power dot com. That's don't waste power dot com. And you can get up to 66 percent off if you click the link in the description, just like groceries and gas, food, your energy bills, your energy bills are expected to keep hitting record highs over the coming months through even through the summer that's right because of the air conditioning now yet the greedy power companies show no signs of lowering the cost that's why i've been using this unbelievable unbelievable little device that is absolutely i love it and thanks to it i've been able to slash my power bills beat the greedy utility companies, and keep more money in my pocket every month. You can use this too. Guys, It's real. just plug it in the wall. Plug it in, plug it in. That's all you got to do. And it levels out the c- current flow of your electricity. It's incredible, really. It really does cut the bill. So go there right now. Don't waste power.com. That's don't waste power.com. All right, now here's what's going on quickly here um iran israel any moment it could explode any moment and it's incredible that we're at this point in history fire and fury some would say but uh israel warns of imminent revenge strike as iran vows to unleash 1500 Missiles. I mean, that's that's incredible. And we we wrote this in the book Revelation nine eleven. We said in verse th- in chapter in, in page thirty two and thirty three. We we projected that this was about to happen. Of course, that book came out three weeks ago, and now it has happened. This is incredible. Um, and get this: is a response to Iran's drones uh, and missile barrage is imminent, according to Israeli officials. So, uh, you know, of course, Biden is saying, don't, don't do it. But who's he saying don't to? I mean, at at one hand, it sounds like he's saying don't to to Iran. But then the next minute, it sounds like it's don't. Um, There's a war cabinet. Don't to Israel. It's it's kind of a weird way of doing that. You could spin this, but... Let me put some uh, perspective to this uh, right now. Uh, we have information on this, and I find it uh, quite extraordinary, really. The, here's what we're covering. Israel's war cabinet is convening as we speak. They've been discussing the potential response to Iran's unprecedented weekend of strikes. Uh, the U.S. expects that Israel's reaction will be limited in scope. Or at least they hope so. The Iranian president, Ibrahim Rasi, has warned that the smallest action against the Iran's interests will be met with a severe, extensive, and painful response. Now, Israel's planned ground offensive in Gaza's southernmost city of Rafah has been delayed following, of course, these attacks by Iran. And so some may say that Iran attacked Israel just to slow down the eventual elimination of Hamas, that maybe they were trying to save Hamas, but they've never fired on Israel in Israel's 76-year history until Saturday night. Now, get this. Um, Hamas has slashed the number of hostages it's willing to release now from 40 down to 20. And we're not, sh- you know what? I got a feeling it's because they don't, they're not alive. And, and I don't even know if any of them are alive. Now, Egypt, on the other hand, it's his, uh, this was about an hour ago. The Egyptian foreign minister has spoke with Israel 
and has been on the phone with Iranian officials on maintaining peace in the region. Now, remember, Egypt was the first country to sign the Abraham Accords, 1979, (coughs) excuse me, with Jimmy Carter. 1979 with Jimmy Carter. So um, this is significant that there's the one stepping out saying, everybody calm down just a minute. Hold on. Because they're really concerned that the whole Middle East will blow up. And then Egypt will have to fully pick a side. Right now, I'm, I think they're leaning to stay on the American side and the Israeli side. But it's uh, they're, they're walking a tightrope. And where would they wind up if this thing blew sky high in World War III? This will get us into a never-ending cycle of reprisals that will only lead to a wider-scale confrontation with very severe consequences for both peoples in both countries, he said. It came after Iran launched a salvo of strikes on Israel on Saturday night over the weekend in retaliation for a suspected Israeli strike on Iran's consulate in Damascus, in Syria, or at least that was Iran's reasoning. As Israel officials discuss their response, regional officials and Israeli allies have warned against an escalation in tensions over Israel's military offensive in Gaza. Talks on securing a hostage deal and ceasefire in Gaza still ongoing but not promising. Israel's offensive in Rafa has been delayed, though. Plans for an expected ground invasion into the southern Gaza city of Rafa where most Palestinians were forced to flee Israel's bombardment when asked if Egypt could temporarily allow the entrance of Gazans refugees. In the wake of this military action in Rafa, the foreign minister said Egypt will continue to act in its best interests and of the Palestinian people. But a mass displacement of Palestinians caused by an Israeli military action in Rafa will not there will not be a refugee camps set up in Egypt what and so they uh, basically called what Israel's doing a war crime now and that's Israel's offensive to root out Hamas and destroy Hamas so you you're you're starting to hear the, the peril it, it look Iran fired 320 different 300 Uh-oh. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Do I not have the set right? Give me a second. Um Okay, that should have been this way. Testing. Yes, you guys can hear me. Okay. Can I just check one thing here because I forgot that I had changed it because I did an interview last night on Caravan to Midnight. And so, because of that, sounds good, though, loud and clear. Is it coming through the mic? Everything's okay? Okay. All right. So, here's the deal. The situation um, has gotten extremely intense and... We're watching now things happen that we didn't think would happen. But really, it's all in the prophecies of the Bible. Now, if you go into the Bible, and remember, my book, Revelation 9-11, I'm just going to say, the reason I wrote it was because God told me that Apollyon was about to be released from the bottomless pit, which is what the Bible says is going to happen in Revelation 9, verse 11. But what follows that? And is that what's happening? Because God said to write the book, but he also said to share the message. And the thing is, what is this bottomless pit creature supposed to do? And is he the reason? Has he begun? Has he released the four angels that are under the river Euphrates? I want you to look at the map, if I can do this correctly. A little difficult, but I'm going to try. Behind me, of course, is the map. And, of course, here's Iran right there. And, and Iran has been attacking 
this whole time, you know, Israel over here behind me, okay? Now, the thing is, when we wrote this, uh, when Apollyon comes out, he, he releases it and, and lets the four angels come out of the river Euphrates. And the river Euphrates, when you think about it, um, starts in Turkey. It starts in Turkey, and it goes uh, all the way to through Iraq, through Syria, and dumps into uh, Iran at the Persian Gulf. It hits those four nations, Turkey, Iraq, Iran, and then, I mean, Turkey, Iraq, Syria, and Iran. Thank you, Heavenbound. Love the book. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Such a blessing you are. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, this is unbelievable. So when Israel went in and hit Damascus, and blew up the Iranian consulate, which was really a military headquarters for terrorism. They were using the diplomatic location of a consulate. And there was their two top brigadier generals and another top general and four other uh, high-ranking officers that were gathered there to plot the war attacks on Israel. Israel preemptively went in and blew that consulate up, cutting off the head of the snake. Iran responded for the first time ever, because Israel has flown into Syria. They have flown into Syria and flown into Syria and flown into Syria and into Lebanon and in all kinds and in in everywhere, knocking in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon. They have been bombing different proxy locations for years. And Iran, who's funding all of this, had never personally responded. But guess what? Saturday night, they did. 320 missiles, some of them cruise missiles, some ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, and also killer drones, all of them, miraculously shot down by the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, the Air Force of Israel, the United States Air Force, the Jordanian Air Force, even the Saudi Arabian Air Force got in the act, and the United Kingdom Air Force, five nations, counting Israel. And so this was huge. 99% were shot down, and one was a dud that landed in the wilderness and hit nothing. There was some minor damage both in Jordan, in Amman, Jordan, and a little bit over in Israel. some uh, And there was a, a couple kids that were injured, but no one died in Israel, which is incredible considering the sophistication of the weaponry and the attack. Now, we know the Bible says in Isaiah 17.1 that Damascus will be destroyed. It will become a ruinous heap, Okay. Now, Apollyon comes out of the bottomless pit in Revelation 9-11. Look what it says. And it says, um, And I heard the four horns of the golden altar, which was before God. An angel sounded. This was the sixth angel. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound to the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day, a month and a year. Four different assaults to slay a third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen was 200,000 thousands or 200 million. Take a look at the Middle East. Look at all the nations surrounding Israel. That's 250 million Arabs. Um, And then throw in some extra nations that would jump in like Turkey and Russia. Uh, And then, you know, the numbers increase, the technology increases considerably. And so this is what John saw in Revelation chapter 9, the releasing of four fallen angels from the river Euphrates area, which is what we're talking about, and the start of World War III, which would have a, an army the size of 200 million people. Now, 
if you go with me to the book of quickly, because some people like to, to, to know exactly what it says in the scriptures. So we go to Isaiah for a minute. First of all, you go to Zechariah, where God said, don't touch the apple of God's eye. And that's in the second chapter. That's Isaiah, that's, excuse me, Zechariah chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2 says, um, don't um, touch the apple of God's eye. It's in verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory which he sent me unto the nations which spoil you, for he that toucheth you touches the apple of his eye. So you don't want to do that. You're in trouble. And that's what Iran just did, as well as all of these proxies who have been attacking uh, Israel. And then the Lord says not to part the land in Joel chapter 3, verse 1. Do not part the land. As a matter of fact, God will bring the whole world down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, it says, and plead with the world not to do this, not to try to forcibly part the land of Israel, not to part it at all. Uh, but it apparently, in prophecy, we're, we are led to believe that the land does get parted, even though that is not what God wanted. Now, in the 12th chapter of Zechariah, you can go there. It says, the burden of the word of the Lord, verse 1, the burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about. Then they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut into pieces. Uh, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Okay, so there God says, and we are seeing that. Did you realize that w that uh, a couple of those ICBM rockets that were fired were headed right toward the Temple Mount? They were shot down. Jordan shot them both down as they were coming over the nation of Jordan. They were just less than a minute away from impact. Can you imagine what would have happened if they had hit the Temple Mount and blew up the al Aska Mosque or the Dome of the Rock or both? I mean, this is incredible. So Jordan stopped that. Now, Jordan is in charge of the Temple Mount right now, even though it sets in the city of Jerusalem. There's so much going on now. But if you go into the book of I told you what Isaiah says, but it also says this in the book of Jeremiah. If you go to Jeremiah chapter 49, here's what's going to happen to Iran for what they're doing to Israel. This is a huge, don't, God says don't. Now, I know um, President Biden is saying don't, but I don't know if he's saying don't to Iran or don't to Israel to respond. Sounds like almost he's trying to do both. But here's what the Bible said. A prophecy against Elam or against Iran. You can find it in Jeremiah 49. I'll start reading at verse 34. And the word of the Lord that came unto Jeremiah the prophet against Elam or Iran in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam the chief of their might. I will break their technology, their weaponry, their bow. Okay? And upon Elam, or Iran, I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven. I will scatter them toward all those winds, and there shall be no nation whither the outcast of Iran shall not come. So remember, the, cur the curse, the attack on Israel, the Jews have to flee. Now God is talking about such a situation that the, is, the Iranians will have to flee. And, and I will cause Iran to be dismayed before their enemies. 
and before them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord, and I will send the sword. So this is war after them till I have consumed them. And I will set my throne in Elam or Iran and will destroy from thence the king, the princes, saith the Lord. So in other words, uh, the, the leadership will be destroyed. But it shall come to pass that in the latter days that I will bring again this captivity to Iran, saith the Lord. So we have a prophecy here. So what brings this on? Why does Iran go through this? It's because of the, their involvement in the attack. And it's not just this first attack, but the funding of the terrorists, the Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, Al-Qaeda, uh, the funding they've done for Jer- Jerusalem, Jihad, Hamas over in Gaza, the Houthis in Yemen, Al-Shabaab in Somalia, Boko Haram in Nigeria, and on and on. And they probably had a, had some support they probably even threw to ISIS. It is incredible. Oh, and Syria, in <laughs> Syria itself. So, yeah, I mean, this is a situation where we're at. We need to pray because we, we want peace. Uh, we want to send, see revival break out in America. We want to push back this beast as far as we can. We can't stop prophecy. The beast will rise, and the new world order will eventually be established, but not on our watch. It doesn't have to be our watch, does it? You mean, Pastor, the, the, the God can change his mind? Yes, when men change their hearts. He did it for Nineveh. Jonah said, you're done. But God said, no. They repented. Hezekiah. Isaiah told King Hezekiah, you're dead. You're done. Get your house in order. You're going to die. God said, no, because he saw the repentance of King Hezekiah and told the same prophet Isaiah to go back and tell him, well, God says, now you're going to live 15 more years. Could God slow down? The beast, God's, God will not lie. The beast will rise. And the battles we're talking about in the end days will take place. But could we, through prayer, through repentance, through revival, could we get God to change his mind on the timing? And this is one thing for sure, folks. God is not mocked. And whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. We've come to this point. I'm telling you, pray. This, we're coming up on the Passover. Listen to me. Next Monday is the 22nd of April. It is Passover. There is intel being released out of Israel that the red heifer will be sacrificed and the burning of its ashes on Passover. Next Monday the 22nd of April. Maybe they'll do it before. They could. Maybe they'll do it after. But it's doubtful. This is the day. Passover. The whole world knows this. The whole Islamic world knows this. Satan in hell knows this. The demons. And is that what God was saying to me in Revelation 9, 11, that It's about to happen. It's upon mankind. Folks, this is very serious. Very serious. We've come to this point. Now, what should the believers do? Keep believing in Jesus. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep speaking positive. Keep being faithful. Keep winning souls to Christ. And we baptized 12 last uh, a week ago in Dallas. Had another person get saved at the altar at my dad's church in Knox on Sunday. We had a lot of people saved Thursday night. I don't know the number. This Thursday night before that, there were 92 people who wanted to be saved. The week before that, there were 70 that wanted to be saved. And I think it was a big number like that again uh, this past Thursday. 
And there was quite a few people this past Sunday night. So people are coming to Christ, believe me. Revival's just around the corner. It can happen. Um, this, this red heifer prophecy uh, I've been talking about in 40 years that I've been preaching the gospel, at least the last 30, at least. I knew this day was coming. I also knew Iran would eventually attack Israel because the scripture says it. We got Psalms 83. We got Ezekiel 38. We got Jesus telling us that that day and hour was coming. We know the third temple will be built. We know the Antichrist will reveal himself in the third temple. We got scripture, prophets, and you can see it. And now the red heifer. And guys, I'm telling you, if you want to give your Passover offering, God says to do this, okay? And I'm going to tell you why he said to do this. He wants to bless you. And the Lord told me, he said, Paul, if you'll show people that I'll give them seven blessings for their faithfulness in the Passover offering. And this might be the most important Passover since they left Egypt. And, 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 and well, I would say the best, the most important Passover since they left Egypt was the, the day Christ was crucified on the cross, which was on the Passover. So you got the Passover of the Exodus from Egypt. You have the Passover, the day that Christ was crucified and became the Passover lamb. And if you have the burning of the red heifer, for the first time in 2,000 years, if that happens this coming Monday, the 22nd, on that Passover, that will be the third critical Passover in history. And so I'm telling you, God honors faithfulness. God honors people who believe his word and act upon it. He said in the book of, uh, of Exodus, in the 23rd chapter, to give and, and not to come empty handed. Many of you are already giving. We're, we're receiving Passover offerings and Passover prayer requests are coming in to us every day. And uh, God is going to send tremendous blessings upon the people of God who still believe his word, who say, you know what? I'm going to do the right thing. And maybe you've never given a Passover offering in your life. And maybe this is your time to say, God, I'm going to step up. You said not to be empty-handed. I'm not going to come empty-handed. But I'm going to go ahead and give my offering, and here's my prayer request. And God says, I'll do seven things, seven things I will do for you uh, if you give the Passover. Give me one second here and grab my notes because I wasn't even going to talk about this now, but now I see why. It's because it's tied to the prop. It's tied to the events, to what's happening. This is this will be the the third most important Passover in history. And this is really incredible if you think about it. The first Passover was the Passover of the Lamb, the blood, and you have to understand that Passover was they took a lamb. And sacrificed it and put that blood outside the door. And they had to roast that lamb. Don't water it down. Roast it in the fire and eat all of it. Call all your family around and eat it. If you can't eat it all because it's too much, ask the neighbors to come and help you. And that was... And that was the night that God passed over the land of Egypt and took the children of Israel and delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh. The next biggest Passover ever... And there was a lot of good ones. They're all great. Was the the day Jesus Christ became the Passover lamb and was nailed to the cross. That was on the Passover. God saw this and darkness came upon the earth for three hours. An earthquake ripped apart Jerusalem and even tipped the the, the temple on the Temple Mount uh, and tore the veil in, in half. And could this be the third most important Passover in history if they sacrifice the red heifer and kick into motion the final stretch before the second coming of Jesus Christ? Are you serious? But the first, so if you give your offering, keep that in mind how important this one is. 
The Lord said in Exodus, don't come empty-handed. Exodus chapter 23. Don't come empty-handed. Everyone give. Those of you who have more, give more. Those of you who have less, give less. Those of you who are somewhere in the middle, give what God, you know, all of you are going to give what God puts on your heart. And if you own businesses, this would be the greatest Passover to contribute. Make a, make a substantial donation of some sacrificial de- donation. Do this. Let's get in the midst of this crazy economy and a world gone mad. God will still bless his people. You can become part of that kingdom blessing. Look what it says. The first blessing is God will assign an angel to you. He'll assign an angel to you. And that angel will stay with you for a year, bringing you all kinds of of direction it says in exodus twenty two twenty. behold i will send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which i prepared to walk you right into the blessing to prepare that to guide you to help you've already got a guardian angel but now god's sending you a special passover angel like the Passover angel that passed over the land of Egypt and protected all of the israeli people who had the blood applied to the door of their house so I'll send you that angel. Number two, in Exodus 23, 22, I will be an enemy to your enemies. Let me read it. In Exodus 23, 22, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Let me just say something to Iran, to the Ayatollah Ala Khomeini. This dude right here. I'm not talking to all the Iranian people because there's, there's a lot of Christians in Iran. I'm talking to this guy who's the head of the snake who is running a a brutal regime trying to impose Sharia law. He's a radical Shiite who hates even the Sunni Muslims. And let me just say to him, this could be your worst nightmare Passover Because if the red heifer is sacrificed on this coming Monday, the 22nd, on on Passover, if this happens and those red ash and that red heifer burns and those ashes begin to fall, you will be the enemy that the Lord talks about in, in Exodus 23, 22. And for every one of you, whoever your enemy has been, whoever's been giving you the most problems, whoever's been unjust to you, will become an enemy of God. Um, Let me tell you what else. Number three, God gives you a third blessing. He'll supply every need. You can find that in Exodus 23, 25. It says, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. So there there it is. He's going to supply every need. That's number three. And then he's going to take sickness away. That's number four. And then in Exodus 23, 26, he'll give you long life. He'll let you fulfill your days. That's five. In Exodus 23, 30, he'll, or Exodus 23, uh, 28, I think it is, he will, oh, Exodus 23, 29, uh, he's going to do two things. He's going to bring increase, prosperity to you, wherever you put your hand on, and the, the last one is you're going to have a whole year, a special year of blessings. He just, In other words, God just doesn't run out of them. How important is the Passover offering? And also send your prayer requests with it, and we're collecting them now. And we're going to take those prayer requests you send, we're going to take those to Israel with us the next time we go. And I don't know when that will be. Heidi and I were really wanting to go and take your prayer requests with us. We were thinking heavily about May or June, just the two of us, do some filming while we're there, go up on the Temple Mount, get a hands-on approach, go to Shiloh, um, go to Mount of Olives and all that. But now, we, we're, now, now, we, now we've just said, no, we can't do it. Not now. Not after Iran fired on Israel. And this thing is, no. So no wonder God told me last year, to, I said, Paul, I gave, I've given you a window. I've, I've opened a window. Take as many people to Israel with you as you possibly can. I will bless them. And we did. We took 57 people. 
and it was an incredible tour. And I want to do another one, but I cannot do it now. That window has closed. Not now. And so how do we donate? Go to our website at publicallyprophecy.com. The easiest way to do it. Just go to publicallyprophecy.com. Right there it is. The ticker's running across the screen. And you can go there and click and give there. You could text give. Some people like to do that. You could go to the Breeze. Give over uh, on Breeze. Some of you do that. You could pick up the phone and call the main line. 765-414-414. 765-414-2230. Some people like to do that. You can send a check or money order in the mail with your all your prayer requests with it and give. Some folks like to do it that way. Okay. Um, here, here we go. Here You can text give to that number. So you can give that way. So you've got all these different ways. So if you're saying, okay, I want to give, I don't know, sure, just just call the main line, 765-414-2230. You can text give, or you can send a check or money order to that address right there, which is 1048-B Sagamore Parkway West, Box 33, West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. Send that to Pastor, send that to Paul Bigley Prophecies, and... Um, yeah, so there's all those different ways. The main thing is, folks, obey God. You can Here's the phone number. You can give by phone, 765-414-2230, if you just want to do it right over the phone. If they're, and call the main headquarters. I want you to have the seven blessings. I want you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I want us all to stay ready. These prophecies that are happening right now, we have never seen anything like this before. We've never seen anything like this before we've not been here folks and this passover offering could be this passover i should say could be the most important passover since christ was crucified on the cross on a passover unbelievable situation we have now it's an incredible time that we're living in, that we've been chosen to be in. If you're not saved, give your life to Jesus Christ because we're running out of time. Now listen, this song is about Ezekiel 37, about the rebirth of Israel as a nation, the dry bones coming to life. God told Ezekiel, I am going to resurrect the nation of Israel, all the children of Israel scattered all over the world. I'm going to bring back and I'm going to rebirth them from dry bones. And that took 3,000 years, but it happened in 1948. Look how close we are now to the coming of the Lord. Saturday was silent, and surely it was through. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped? It's the sound of a dry bones rattling This is the praise make a dead man walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of dry bones rattling God bless you. God bless you, Tara.
This is the time, folks. about it. Of Iran's rockets could not reach their targets. Are you serious? God's on you. God's in control. But the prophecies are coming to pass. The Holy Land is in peril. David was challenged by the Philistine giant Goliath. He began to defy the armies of God, began to mock the name of God. Israel was afraid. It was a time of peril, a time of war. But little David, a shepherd boy, anointed to be the next king of Israel, did what Daniel says, those that know their God shall do mighty exploits and teach others of righteousness. And so this is what's happening. We're in that moment now. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for peace in the Middle East. Pray for everyone involved. And keep your eyes on Jesus. Now, here's this, I'm telling you. We don't know. Will, will Israel hit them? 
hit Iran back? If so, how hard? And after that, does Iran say, does Iran back down? Or does Israel decide not to hit them militarily, but to do it systematically by using cyber attacks and sanctions and other types of, uh, you know, assassinations of, of leaders and top generals and that kind of thing. We're just going to wait and see which way it goes. My opinion is, I'm almost 100% sure of this, that Israel will hit them militarily. But they won't hit them as hard as they probably want to because of the world pressure and the pressure from the Biden administration. And listen, the United States Congress is getting ready to vote on whether or not to give Israel aid to also send aid to Ukraine and to send aid to Taiwan. And, you know, you got to know that it'll probably pass if Netanyahu lays low for a while. But if he goes ahead and and rains hell down on Iran, then they'll probably not give him any more support. This is crazy because if you said you are supporting somebody, thank you, James Merkel says he loves the book. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. For also, thank all of you who have left uh, reviews over at Amazon. I read every, I go every day and just read the reviews. And uh, again, today we're still number one new release. We have been since Easter Sunday, since March 31st. Today is now the what the 16th of April. We've we've stayed number one new release right now in the category of. Uh, New Testament commentary. Sometimes we're number one in Christian spiritual warfare, and sometimes we're number one in religion and church and state. But at this moment, it is um, New Testament commentaries, and we've remained number one new release. Last night, we were on Caravan to Midnight with John B. Wells, and it was me, Troy Anderson, and Colonel Giamona. And uh, it was a great show, really. It was a great show. It was last night. We got I got off the air at midnight, so that's why I'm. Uh, sometimes my schedule's kind of off because I'm I'm doing early morning interviews on radio and TV or, where, or radio generally. Then I'm doing interviews sometimes late at night on these late night radio shows, and then I'm doing uh, interviews, television, and different interviews uh, in the midday. Plus, trying to con- keep up with everything going on with you guys. So thank God. Uh, that my son, B.C. Begley, has been helping me keeping track and, and really keeping an eye on what's going on and the rest of the stuff going on and posting those videos, uh, usually Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, to help. Because really, I don't know. I can't work 24 hours a day, but I can do a lot, but I can't do that. But the Bible says we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us, but it, also he said he just required a reasonable service. So trying to just be reasonable here. I'm going to let you guys go. There's a whole lot more going on. I'll be back with another update. Don't. Who's he talking to? Is he talking to Iran or is he talking to Israel? The Holy Land is in peril. Give your life to Jesus Christ. It's almost over. It's almost over. Get our book at, Revel- at Revelation 9-11. You, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, you can get get it at uh, Amazon.com. That's a good place to go. Amazon.com. God bless.